What's going on, YouTube? This is SG1 Sports. If you're watching our college football channel, we continue with our 2023 schedule preview projected record series. The Oklahoma Sooners are up next. I know a lot of you have asked about specific teams. Don't worry, we're going to get to all the Power 5 teams. Just be patient. We will get to all of them. I'm trying to put out one of these every single day, so it shouldn't take too long. Uh, but yeah, let's get here to Oklahoma. Before we look at 2023, let's look back at 2022. Here was the schedule from last season for Oklahoma. You can see Nebraska was the non-conference game, played them on the road. Uh, they had TCU on the road, Iowa State on the road, West Virginia on the road, and Texas Tech on the road. You look at that before the season started and you thought, you know, this really sets up, this sets up really well for Oklahoma. Uh, you know, you, you get some of the bigger games. Baylor we thought was going to be a tougher game. Oklahoma State we thought was going to be um you know, we thought those were potentially top 15 teams in the preseason, and they had them at home. So we thought the schedule set up really well for them. Uh, obviously, losing Dylan Gabriel in the TCU game, that set them back there. But just not a good finish with the loss, losses to Baylor, West Virginia, and Texas Tech. Uh, we'll see how it plays out this year. But uh, let's first, before we go look at the full schedule, let's look at the non-conference schedule, the teams they'll play outside of the Big 12. They'll play Arkansas State, SMU, and Tulsa. They will play Tulsa on the road, but a very easy non-conference schedule. I believe someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe they had Georgia originally scheduled for this season, and because of the move to the SEC, they uh, they canceled that series. So that would have made it obviously a much tougher non-conference schedule. Uh, but as it stands in 2023, again, Oklahoma will have a very, very easy non-conference schedule. So let's go week by week. Here's the full schedule including the Big 12 Conference games. They will open up with Arkansas State on September the 2nd, SMU on the 9th, then on the road at Tulsa on September 16th. So they play all three of their non-conference games there right at the beginning, and that's usually the way it works in the Big 12. All right, so their first Big 12 game will be against a newcomer. It'll be on the road at Cincinnati. Interesting way to start off Big 12 play uh, there on September the 23rd. And then after that, it's a home game against Iowa State on the 30th. And then you jump into the game against Texas on October 7th. That game will be in Dallas like it always is. So that's your first half of the schedule. A bye week after Texas, a bye week right there in the middle. But again, Cincinnati, Iowa State, Texas. An interesting start there to the Big 12 Conference schedule for Oklahoma. Um, you know, I would say they, they can't win all three of those games, but it'll be a it'll be a challenge, especially. You know, Cincinnati on the road, and we know Texas, they're going to be good. Iowa State could be sneaky good this year. They were really young last year, uh, but that's the first half. After the bye week, they will start the second half of the season off with the other newcomer, UCF, the other newcomer on their schedule. They get UCF at home. Really interesting game there uh, with Dylan Gabriel playing his old team. That game will be on October the 21st. Then after that, it's Kansas on the 28th. That game will be on the road. It's back-to-back -back road games with Kansas and then Oklahoma State. Um, not, not too horrible there uh, as Oklahoma State will start off the month of November. Then they'll play West Virginia after that, a team that has given Oklahoma some trouble since they've come into the Big 12 at times. Then they play BYU on the road on the 18th. And then they'll close things out with TCU Interesting way to finish out the season. They'll play TCU, and they will play them on the Friday after Thanksgiving. So that'll be a Friday game. Potentially, potentially, those two teams could meet again the very next week in the Big 12 Championship. I'm not saying it's going to go that way, but those are two of the contenders, so it could happen. That would be very interesting there as well. Uh, but again, when you look at the, the full schedule here, the newcomers that they will play, Cincinnati and UCF, so they don't play um, actually, they play Cincinnati, UCF, and BYU. So they'll play three of the newcomers, all of them except for Houston. I, when I was looking over the schedule, uh, I, I thought that all the teams were only going to play two. Uh, so they will not play Texas Tech. That's a team, you know, a traditional Big 12 team. Also, no Kansas State. Kansas State is a team that has, has given them some trouble in the past. Also, Baylor is not on here. So you're talking about three teams that beat Oklahoma last year, not on the schedule this year. That is interesting. And again, playing three of the newcomers, uh, I, I thought that it was going to be where each team would play two of them, but maybe the math doesn't work out there. Uh, so they'll get three of them. Cincinnati, UCF, 
and BYU, you, you trade those for uh, tro- for the games that they would have had against Kansas State, Texas Tech, and um, Baylor. So pr- probably a pretty good trade off there. You know, Kansas State has given Oklahoma a lot of trouble uh, in the past. Baylor has a chance to be pretty good this year. They were young last year. Uh, and Texas Tech actually has a chance to be sneaky good this year as well. But Cincinnati, UCF, BYU, those will be uh, pretty good games as well. So it'll be a much different look here for Oklahoma, not playing some of those traditional Big 12 teams that you're so used to seeing them play uh, with, with three of the new teams in there. That means only six of their games will be against teams that were in the Big 12 last season. But all in all, the schedule's not too tough. You know, you got back-to-back road games, Tulsa and Cincinnati, back-to-back road games with Kansas and Oklahoma State. Um but, you know, it, it sets up pretty well for them. TCU is at home. Uh, UCF is at home. West Virginia, a tough place to play. You get that game at home. Um, Oklahoma State could be down. I mean, they lost a lot in the transfer portal. So you, you might would, would like to play a team like Oklahoma State if you're going to have back-to-back road games. So, yeah, I think the, uh, this schedule sets up pretty well for Oklahoma. An easy non-conference schedule. Nothing too challenging. They don't have, like, a, a tough three-game stretch. It's going to be really, really hard in the Big 12. Uh, so overall, a schedule I think that sets up really well for Oklahoma in 2023. Here were some of the projections from last season for Oklahoma. You see a 6-6 six and six regular season schedule. Our projection had them at 8-4. and four. I picked them to go 9-3. and three. Uh, The FBI had them at 9.1 and 3.4. The over-under was at 9.5. So 8-4, and 9-3, and three, that seemed to be where everyone thought this Oklahoma team would be last season. Obviously, it didn't work out that way. Uh, you know, I, I knew a lot of weapons on offense coming back, and I thought Brent Venables would, would kind of get this defense turned around. thought we'd see some improvements there. And the offense turned out to be pretty good. It was actually the defense that struggled, uh, and that's a big reason, I think, why they did finish 6-6. Six and six. But you can see the projection there was actually closer than anything else. We'll see how it plays out this season. Again, here is the schedule. This is the, the scale that we'll be using uh, if the games stay in the white. Those, those are 50-50 games, games where I think the spread will be less than a touchdown, less than 20 over 80, games where I think the spread will be 20 or more, 20 to 29, 71 to 80. Those are games where I think the spread will be double digits, 10 to 19 in that range. And then 30 to 39, 61 to 70. Those are games where I think the spread will be about a touchdown, six, seven, eight, maybe nine points uh, in that range. So let's start with the easy games here for Oklahoma, Arkansas State, SMU, Tulsa. And, you know, it's very early in the offseason. I have not done a lot of research on the group of five teams. So maybe one of these teams is going to be better than I'm anticipating. I know SMU lost their quarterback. Uh, Tulsa, new coach. So, you know, I don't really anticipate any of those teams being a threat to Oklahoma potentially. Uh, one or two of them might wind up in the blue. Maybe Oklahoma's only favored by 17 or 18 points. But either way, they will be counted. would be counted as wins because all the blue and green games are counted as wins here when we do this projection. So that really wouldn't affect anything. Uh, but again, those are games that Oklahoma has to win. They should win, and they should be favored by a lot. How about games here in the purple? Iowa State, West Virginia, BYU. I do believe the Sooners will be favored by seven or eight points in these games. Good news is you get two of these at home, Iowa State and West Virginia. Uh, Those are games that Oklahoma should be the better team. Again, I know they were not great last year, but you look at what they have coming back. Um, You know, I'm kind of looking at Oklahoma in that second tier of the Big 12, at least right now. I think there's potential they could be in that top tier. Um, But yeah, Iowa State, a team that was young last year, they're going to actually, I think, be sneaky this year. But the game's at home for Oklahoma. I think they'll be favored by about eight or nine. Uh, Same thing with West Virginia. And then BYU on the road, uh, I do think Oklahoma will be a clear favorite there. So we're not counting those as wins, not guaranteed wins, but these are games that Oklahoma uh, really needs to win. They should win, and they should be a clear favorite in all three of them. And that's really about it for for Oklahoma. When you look at the rest of the schedule, the rest of it's kind of 50-50 games. Uh, Cincinnati on the road, that's a 50-50 game. Texas, I think Texas... Looking at it right now, and you look at last year's game, Texas, of course, is, isn't a tier above Oklahoma, but it's a rivalry game, and you never know what to expect in that one. Uh, so I'm putting it in the 50-50 category. If you want to put it down in the yellow, I, I could understand why you would maybe do that. But I think it's it's close enough to where this one's a 50-50 game. Texas definitely should be favored, but not by a ton. Uh, UCF, 
a team that you know was pretty similar to Oklahoma last year. Kansas on the road. I think Oklahoma is the better team, but on the road, you never know. Same thing with Oklahoma State. I think Oklahoma is the better team there. Looking at it again right now, I know it's very early in the offseason, but Oklahoma should be better than Kansas and Oklahoma State, but they play those games on the road. And then you look at TCU. I think TCU probably is going to be the better team, but that's a home game for Oklahoma. So that's why it winds up here in the 50-50 category. So, you know, if Kansas, Oklahoma State, if those games were at home, I'd put them in the purple. If TCU was on the road, I'd put it in the yellow. But uh, just the way it works out with the home and away games here, you just got a bunch of 50-50 games here for Oklahoma. I think the spread, again, will be around three or four points in these games. Uh, maybe a slight underdog on the road at Cincinnati, a slight underdog against TCU, a four-point, five-point underdog against Texas. Uh, UCF might be a pick em. Kansas, Oklahoma State, I think Oklahoma will be favored by about a field goal. But uh, you're going to have a lot of close games. You're going to have a lot of games that could go either way, which means you know it could be another 6-6 six and six year or it could be a 10-2 and two year. It's just really going to depend on how they play in those close games. But to get the projected record, we count the games in the green as wins. 50% for the white, 65% for the purple. Average all of that out and you get a projection of eight and four. So that is the projection for Oklahoma, kind of right in the middle of what I just mentioned. You know, yeah, six and six is a, is a possibility. Again, with this schedule, there are, aren't are a lot of easy wins on the schedule, but there aren't a lot of games that you, you would say that they can't win. I mean, potentially they could win every game on this schedule. Uh, so, you know, eight and four kind of, I think it's a fair projection. Eight and four, nine and three would probably be my projection. Uh, but usually, again, when you do these averages, it does tend to be a more conservative number. So aim for the projection for Oklahoma in 2023.